You are about to embark upon the great crusade. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Welcome to the Army Flashcards Ranger School Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Wiley, and we've been doing this podcast for several episodes now, so we're going to cut this introduction down a bit. For those of you who this is your first time, this is simply a reading of the Ranger Handbook. And for everybody, if you want some more resources for Ranger School, be sure to check out our website at armyflashcards.com. And with that, let's get into it. This is Chapter 4 of the Ranger Handbook, Communications. The basic requirement of combat communications is to provide rapid, reliable, and secure interchange of information. Communications are vital to mission success. This chapter helps the Ranger Squad and Platoon maintain effective communications and correct any radio antenna problems. It also discusses military radio communications equipment and automated ANCDs. Equipment 4-1 This section discusses military radio communications equipment and automated net control devices, also called ANCDs. Each military radio has a receiver and transmitter. Rangers use several different types of radios. See Table 4-1 on pages 4-1 through 4-3. Radios vary from high frequency, very high frequency, ultra high frequency, and tactical satellite. 4-2 Knowing what each radio can do is crucial in planning and requesting the most reliable and effective communications equipment for a particular mission. Military operations use four primary frequency ranges. See Table 4-2 on page 4-4. Table 4-1, Military Radios. The three radios that the Ranger Handbook discusses here are the PRIC-152, which is also a Harris handheld radio. There's the PRIC-148, which is what you would know as an embitter. And then you got the PRIC-119 FOX, which is what you would consider the SINGARS or like the MANPAC radio. So a note on this table, I'm not going to read every single row. I'm going to read the most relevant ones that you might actually remember. PRIC-152 Description Multi-band handheld receiver and transmitter Frequency range VHF low, yes VHF high, yes UHF, yes TACSAT, yes Power output, up to 10 watts tax set. Battery requirements, rechargeable lithium ion, included with the radio. Scanning, 10 user program nets, tax set or line of sight frequencies. Disadvantages, lower power output than the PRIC-119 FOX. Methods of transmission, SINGARS, yes. Half quick, yes. ECCM, yes. And frequency hop, yes. Terrain restrictions. Line of sight, open to slightly rolling terrain. Tax at any terrain. Prick 148. Description. Multiband interteam or intra-team radio. Frequency range. VHF low, yes. VHF high, yes. UHF, yes. Tax at, yes, up to 5 watts. Power output, up to 5 watts. Battery requirements. Rechargeable lithium ion. Scanning, 10 user program nets, tax set, or line of sight frequencies. Disadvantages, lower power output than the PRIC-119 FOX and the PRIC-152. Methods, SINGARS, yes. half quick yes. ECCM, yes. Frequency hop, yes. Terrain restrictions, line of sight, open to slightly rolling terrain. Tax set, any terrain. And the PRIC-119 FOX, multi-band, multi-mission man pack. Frequency range, VHF low, yes, up to 5 watts. VHF high, no. UHF, no. Tax at, no. Power output, up to 10 watts. Battery requirements. Any of these, BB-390, BB-2590, BB-590, BB-5590. Scanning, 4 channels in FM mode. Disadvantages, lower power output than a PRIC-117 FOX. Limited frequency range, cannot communicate with U.S. Air Force craft. Method of transmission, SINGARS, yes. Half-quick, no. ECCM, no. 
Frequency hop, yes. Terrain restrictions. Line of sight, open to slightly rolling terrain. Tax set, none. End table 4-1. Table 4-2. Frequency ranges. High frequency. 1.6 to 29.999 MHz. Very high frequency low. 30 to 89.999 MHz. Very high frequency. 90 to 224.999 MHz. Ultra high frequency. 225 to 512 MHz. End table 4-2. Man pack radio assembly. Prick 119 Fox. 4-3. To assemble a man pack radio, first check and install a battery. Once that is done, go on to position the antenna, set up the handset, set presets and frequencies, and scan. This is achieved by following these steps. A. Inspect the battery box for dirt or damage. B. Stand radio on its side with the battery cover facing up. C. Check battery life condition. D. Place battery in box. E. Close and latch the battery cover. F. Return radio to upright position. G. If a used battery is installed, enter the battery life condition into the radio. Set function to load. Press battery and then clear. Enter number recorded on side of battery. Press store. Set function to squelch on. H. Inspect and position the antenna. Inspect whip antenna connector or antenna and non radio for damage. Screw whip antenna into base and tighten. Carefully mate antenna base with radio transmitter antenna connector. Hand tighten. Position antenna as needed by bending gooseneck. Note, keep the antenna straight if possible. If the antenna is bent to a horizontal position, the radio may have to be turned before receiving and transmitting messages. I. Set up the handset. Inspect the handset for damage. Push handset on audio data and twist clockwise to lock in place. J. Pack. Place radio transmitter and field pack with the antenna on the left shoulder. Hold top flap of field over radio transmitter and secure flap to field pack using straps and buckles. K. Set presets. Channel 1. Mode. Single channel. Radio frequency power. I. Volume. Mid-range. Dimensions. Full clockwise. Function. Load. Data rate. Off. Single channel loading frequencies. Obtain Ranger Signal Operating Instructions, or SOI. Set Function Load, Set Mode Single Channel, Set Channel Manual Q, or Set Channel 1 to 6 where the frequency is stored. Press Frequency. Display shows 000001 or frequency radio transmitters currently turned on. Press Clear. Display shows 5 lines. Enter the number of the new frequency. If a mistake is made with a number, press Clear. Press Stow. Display blinks. Set function. Squelch on. M. Clearing frequencies. Set mode. Single channel. Set channel. Manual Q or set channel 1 to 6 where the frequency is to be stored. Press frequency. Press clear. Press load. Stow. Set function. Squelch on. N. Scanning of multiple frequencies. Load all desired frequencies using single channel loading frequencies instructions. Set channel, Q. Set single channel, frequency hop. Set function, squelch on. Press stow. Display says scan. Press the number 8. More than one frequency can now be scanned. Basic troubleshooting, 4-4. Basic troubleshooting skills are needed to correct the simple communications problems that occur during a mission. Being able to troubleshoot quickly can make the difference between successful accomplishment of the mission and mission failure. This includes A. Check radio settings. Radio frequency, load proper frequency. Power output, set to high power. Time, if using frequency hop, reset time. Cryptograph fill, if using ciphertext, reload cryptographic fill with the automated net control device. Control knob, ensure radio is on on position. B, check radio assembly and battery. Check antenna fitting, attach lawn whip or field expedient antenna. Check hand mic fitting. Ensure contacts are clean and fitting is properly secured to radio. Check battery. Install fresh battery. C. With line of sight radios, moving to higher ground may be necessary in order to make radio contact, especially in densely vegetated or uneven terrain. Antennas 4-5 This section discusses repair techniques, construction and adjustment, 
field expedient antennas, antenna length and orientation, and improvement of marginal communications. Antennas are sometimes broken or damaged, causing communications degradation or failure. If a spare antenna is available, replace the bad one. 4-6. If there is no spare, the squatter platoon might have to construct an emergency antenna. The following information suggests some ways to repair antennas and antenna supports and construction and adjustment of emergency antennas. Whip and wire antennas. 4-7. When a whip antenna breaks in two, connect the broken part to the part attached to the base by joining the sections. To restore the antenna to its original length, add a piece of wire that is nearly the same length as the missing part of the whip. Lash the pole support securely to both sections of the antenna. Before connecting the two antenna sections to the pole support, thoroughly clean them and ensure good contact. If possible, solder the connections. 4-8. Emergency repair of a wire antenna may involve the repair or replacement of the wire used as the antenna or transmission line or the repair or replacement of the assembly used to support the antenna. When one or more wires of an antenna are broken, the antenna can be repaired by reconnecting the broken wires. To do this, lower the antenna to the ground, clean the ends of the wires, and twist the wires together. Whenever possible, solder the connection. 4-9. If the antenna receives damage beyond repair, construct a new one. Make sure that the length of the substitute antenna wires are the same length as those of the original. Antenna supports may also require repair or replacement. Anything can be used as a substitute for the damage support, provided it is insulated and strong enough. 4-10. If the radiating element is not properly insulated, then field antennas can short to the ground and no longer work. Many common items make good field expedient insulators. The best are plastic or glass. Plastic spoons, buttons, bottlenecks, and plastic bags are good insulators. Although wood and rope are less effective insulators, they are better than nothing. The radiating element, the antenna wire, should only touch the supporting, non-conductive insulator and the antenna terminal. It should remain physically separated from everything else. Construction and Adjustment 4-11 There are specific methods to construct and adjust antennas. The best wire for antennas is copper or aluminum. However, in an emergency, use any wire that can be found. The exact length of most antennas is critical. Make sure that the emergency antenna is the same length as the original antenna. 4-12 Antennas can usually survive heavy windstorms if supported by a tree trunk or strong branch. To keep the antenna tight and from breaking or stretching when the trees sway, attach a spring or older inner tube to one end of the antenna. Another technique is to pass a rope through a pulley or eye hook. Attach the rope to the end of the antenna and heavily weight the rope to keep the antenna tight. To ensure the rope or wire guidelines do not interfere with the operation of the antenna, cut the wire into several short lengths and connect the pieces with the insulators. 4-13 an improvised antenna may change the performance of a radio set. A distant station may be used to test the antenna. If the signal received from the station is strong, the antenna is operating satisfactorily. If the signal is weak, adjust the height and length of the antenna and the transmission line to receive the strongest signal at a given setting on the volume control of the receiver. This is the best method of tuning an antenna when transmission is dangerous or forbidden. 4-14 In some radio sets, use the transmitter to adjust the antenna. First set the controls of the transmitter to normal, then tune the system by adjusting the antenna height, the antenna length, and the transmission line length to obtain the best transmission output. Expedient 292 Type Antenna 4-15 Developed for use in the jungle, when properly used, these antennas can improve communications. Their weight and bulk render them impractical for most squad and platoon operations. However, the unit can carry just the masthead and antenna sections and mount them onto wood poles or trees. An expedient version can be constructed using any insulated wire and other available material. For example, almost any plastic, glass, or rubber items can serve as insulators. If these are unavailable, dry wood can work. 4-16 At the radio set, remove about one inch of insulation from each end of the wire. Connect the ends to the positive side of the Cobra head connector. Be sure the connectors are tight or secure. See figures 4-1 and figure 4-2 on page 4-10. Set up the correct frequency, turn on the set, and proceed with communications. 4-17 Use the planning considerations discussed in the next paragraph to determine the length of the elements, one radiating wire and three ground plane wires, for the desired frequency. See figure 4-3 on page 4-12 for an expedient version set cut. Cut these elements A from claymore mine wire or similar wire. The heavier the gauge, the better, but insulated copper core wire works best. Cut spacing sticks, B, the same length as the ground plane wires. 
Place the sticks in a triangle and tie their ends together with wire, tape, or rope. Attach an insulator, C, to each corner and one end of each ground plane wire to each insulator. Bring the loose ends of the ground plane wires together, attach them to an insulator, C, and tie securely. Strip about 3 inches of insulation from each wire and twist them together. 4-18. Tie one end of the radiating element wire to the other side of insulator and the other end of another insulator, B. Strip about 3 inches of insulation from the radiating element, C. Cut enough wire to reach from the proposed location of the antenna to the radio set. Keep this line as short as possible because excess length reduces the efficiency of the system. Tie a knot at each end to identify as the hot lead. Remove insulation from the hot wire and tie it to the radiating element wire at insulator C. Remove insulation from the other wire and attach it to the bare ground plane element wires at insulator C. Tape all connections and do not allow the radiating element wire to touch the ground plane wires. 4-19 Attach a rope to the insulator on the free end of the radiating element and toss the rope over the branches of a tree. Pull the antenna as high as possible. Keep the lead in routed down through the triangle. Secure the rope to hold the antenna in place. As a side note, at this point, on the following pages of the Ranger Handbook, you have Table 4-3, which is a quick reference table. and has the different operating frequencies and the element lengths that you would need. And then the following page is uh, Figure 4-3, which is a picture of a completed expedient 292 type antenna. Antenna length planning considerations 4 20. The length of an antenna is considered in the construction of field expedients. At a minimum, a quarter of the frequency wavelength should be used as the length of the field expedient antenna. Another important factor in line of sight communications is the height of the antenna in relation to the receiving station. The higher the antenna, the greater the range the radio transmission has. 4 21. Terrain and curvature of the Earth affect line of sight communication by absorbing VHF and UHF communications into the Earth's surface. This is overcome by increasing antenna height, power output, and radio frequency. Since radio frequencies are pre-designated and the power output is limited to the capabilities of the radio set, antenna length and height are the two variables that can be manipulated to increase radio communication range. Using the following formulas, it is possible to plan for the use of field expedient antennas, determine the best location to gain and maintain communication, and plan for communication windows as necessary. 4-22. To calculate the physical length of an antenna in feet, use the following equation. It gives the antenna length in feet for a one quarter wavelength of the fre frequency. To determine the antenna length in feet for a full wavelength antenna, multiply the antenna length by 4. Equation. x equals 234 divided by frequency, where x equals the length of the antenna in feet, frequency equals the radio frequency used. Example, 234 divided by 38.95 equals 6.01 feet, quarter wavelength antenna. Full wavelength antenna example, 6.01 feet times 4 equals 24.04 feet. 4-23. Curvature of the earth allows a person standing 5 feet 7 inches tall looking across a flat surface to see objects approximately 4.7 kilometers in the distance. Anything beyond this is below the horizon which is dead space. To overcome this, the person moves to a higher elevation in order to see beyond 4.7 kilometers. 4-24. Line of sight communication is subject to the same principle. Use the following formula to calculate the required antenna height for a given distance. Keep in mind that when on low ground, such as a valley draw or depression, the height of the antenna is greater. When on high ground, the antenna height may be shorter. Use the following formula to compute height of antenna to compensate for curvature of the earth. Equation, x equals 234 divided by frequency. x equals the length of the antenna in feet, frequency the radio frequency used. Distance in kilometers from receiving station equals square root of 12.7 times AM, where AM is the antenna height in meters. Example, known height, distance in kilometers equals square root of 12.7 times 1.7 meters, or unknown height, antenna height in meters equals 0 0.07874 times 4.7 kilometers squared. All right, and that concludes chapter four of the Ranger Handbook, Communications. The next chapter is chapter five, Demolitions. So we will cover that next time. Until then, uh, we have a few updates to our website. We just started a new uh, Platoon Tactical Basics section on our blog. Right now, we just got a, a down and dirty walkthrough on how to plan an ambush effectively. Uh, so as you're waiting for the next podcast to come out, uh, check out the website. 
armyflashcards.com and start freshening yourself up on some of the more tactical things we're going to get into in the Ranger Handbook here soon. So with that, take care and we'll see you next time.